which leads us into what we're going to be talking about today. So today we are talking about, you know, choices and action, but in the idea of sitting that and grounding that all in appreciation and gratitude. It is gratitude month, right? I call it gratitude month because it's November and it's Thanksgiving. And the way you can really, as you guys have been following me, you know, I really believe change your perspective, change your circumstances, right? If you're in a career that you hate, a job that you hate, put all of that in perspective because nothing is permanent, right? Nothing is forever. And so even if it's something that you hate, that is not forever. You have a choice, right? So sit in gratitude for the fact that you have a choice. Sit in gratitude and appreciation of what you're learning. I just had a conversation with someone the other day who was just really hating what they're doing and, and so ready to get out and, and we'll get out. There's some reasons that they're staying. Um, they will get out soon. Um, but as we were talking about it, I said, but here's the thing, just change your perspective. You hate it. You, every time, every day you wake up, you don't want to go. Okay. That's real. And I honor that. And you got to pay attention to that and be aware of that. And you have a choice. You can turn your perspective around to say, this is not ultimately where I want to be, but as much as they are using me, I'm going to use them. I'm going to get absolutely everything I can out of this role, out of this job, out of this company, out of whatever. And I don't mean un unfair, uh, crazy things, but get everything you can in terms of what you can learn, tools you can gather, all of that kind of stuff that makes you ready, prepares you for your next move. Just change the perspective. Change the perspective. Doesn't mean you don't hate it anymore. It just means your ability to tolerate it is different because you're putting it in the right place overall. You're putting it in the right place. So this whole idea of, of appreciation and gratitude as a as a foundation, I think I told you guys a few weeks ago, I went back and restarted a morning kind of journaling practice and was doing it every day. I've had a few days that I've missed, um, but redoing this journaling practice starting in, um, every day and getting up at four, between four and 4.30 every day and starting with that. And, and then really trying to be focused on what I'm going to do, where I'm going to spend my energy, because one, time is not renewable. Time is not renewable. Energy can be, but then we figure out we don't have time to do what we need to do to renew the energy, right? So you got to protect your energy, protect your mindset, protect your heart. Um, and so starting out doing that and then sitting in appreciation, which gives you an ability to sit in awareness and awareness of the little things. Awareness of the little things, awareness of the things that come to you when you really are just surrendering to the flow, when you just do the things that you don't really want to do, when you do them when you're tired, when you do them when you're just cranky, all of that kind of stuff. There is amazing, there are amazing things that will happen when you just decide to do it anyway, right? Decide to do it afraid. And when you give yourself the gift of doing the hard work, because working on us is hard. Addressing your own demons is hard. It is not easy to own your own stuff, to recognize it, be aware of it, and then do something about it. That's not easy work because you've got to have a whole different level of vulnerability because you can lie to a whole lot of people, but you can't lie to yourself, right? So um, yesterday I got to have dinner with my god sister and neither one of us are going out a whole lot. We're just, we're just still not, you know, we're just not hanging out a lot. But we ended up having dinner last night and it was it was so incredible. And it was another indication of if you just surrender to the flow and just go, amazing things happen. You know, Jerry and I were both talking about uh, a couple of weeks ago how when I don't want to do something, I make myself sit and say, OK, are you just being contrary? You're just being antisocial or is there really something in your gut, in your spirit that's saying don't do this? And so I was tired. I hadn't slept Sunday night. It was one of those, it was just craziness. And then when she confirmed, I was like, yep, I'm confirming. I'm going because I want to see her. And I tell you what, there are some things that came out of that conversation that I just needed. Hmm. And it really sat me in this level of appreciating the people that are around us. And the fact that the experiences that other people have that we don't have, their life stories, their engagement, the things that they're listening to, the things that they're watching, how different that can be. And by them sharing that with you can make an impact on you and what you're trying to do. It's one of the reasons why it's so important for you to have 
courage to share your story. You never know who's listening. You never know who needs to hear that little nugget that you have. And one of the key things that came out of that, that I appreciate so much and that I'm so grateful for, because it's a, a challenge for me, is simple. And see, y'all, I'm telling you, things come up in threes. Things come up in threes. So I was just having this conversation about how, you know, it's easy to be complicated. It is so easy to make things complex and have all kinds of sign-offs and checks and balances. Companies are masterful at making things complicated. It is hard to make things simple. And we were talking about languages because y'all have heard me. I want to get my Spanish back. I want to get my French back because there's some things I want to do. And then I am me. So I'm thinking, well, here's all the other stuff I need to do. So I have to have time to go do the language because I need to go find an instructor. I need to go take a course because I don't have a lot of patience to be in this group thing. And I don't really want to do a group thing and do I really want to do it online. And I mean, all, you know, the, the mental gymnastics of just trying to get back to learning Spanish. And when I was in Cancun, my driver let me practice my Spanish with him. It was just awesome. Although it was kind of embarrassing how bad it has gotten after working so hard, it's gotten so bad. And she said, we were talking about how she was doing it because my, my god sister speaks Spanish and she takes her, she's in the University of Houston downtown, the School of Social Work. I think it might be the School of Humanities. Um, she's got her, her doctors in social work. And she, she, we were talking about Spanish and I said, man, I really got to get it back. I want to get my French back. And she said, well, have you looked at Duolingo? I'm like, ah, you know, that whole app thing. I don't know. But we started talking about it. She started showing it to me. started going through. And she's like, Laurel, 10 minutes a day. She said, I was getting ready to go somewhere, going back, back to Costa Rica, six months. I did 15 minutes a day for six months and I was ready to go. I took my little test when I got there to go back into language immersion. And they had me in an advanced class. I was with my own instructor because I was so far beyond everybody else. 15 minutes a day. Now we waste 15 minutes trying to figure out what we're going to do next. And that simplicity of saying, Laurel, you don't have to figure out all the other stuff you got to fix and then go find an instructor and then figure out how to do the class. And do, you don't have to do all of that. 15 minutes a day, go get an app. It is one is better than nothing. But two, some of these things have come so far that what you're really trying to do is get your ear back and get your vocabulary back. And there are other ways to work on some of that stuff. But just go do something and it can be simple and it can be short and it could be limited amounts of time. Right. Simple. And I left there so appreciative and in such gratitude for the people that are in my life who don't even know how big an impact they're making. And how I am so grateful to now be sitting in this space of doing this work and working with my therapist and telling her yesterday, you know, these blocks that we got to figure out what these blocks are. Cause see, I'm tired now. I'm tired of the blocks. We got it. I need the steps for the blocks. And of course she just started laughing because that's not how that works. Uh, but it's, it's, it is so important that we step back, give ourselves the care to understand where we are. Remember the polyvagal theory, right? Are you really sitting in dorsal where you just really want to, you just want to go to bed. You just don't want to do anything else. You're so overwhelmed or are you in that, you know, fight or flight, right? That frenetic systemic area where you're just all this crazy energy and you're in fight or flight mode. Or are you really sitting in your zone of genius? When you're in ventral, right, things are working, you're able to make clear decisions. Because remember, that's all our nervous system. That's that reptilian brain, right? It's just responding to stuff. And that's where if you're doing the hard work, and that's why I say the work is hard, when you're doing the hard work, you're able to go back and look at those experiences that you've had that are true. True, factual experiences. Something actually happened. This was the outcome. This is how it impacted you. Those things are true. But you're able to butt those up against the story you're telling yourself about those experiences. So, yes, this was hard, but does that mean I'm incapable? Because see, the story will start whining is we're not capable. We're not enough. We can't trust ourselves. We can't get it done. We don't, we're not smart enough. The other people do it better. All of that madness, that's the story we start telling. Just because the experience was hard or the experience was difficult. So being able to unwind the story so that we are listening to the stuff that's real. And in order to do that, it's important to pause and sit and think deeply, deeply about all of the things you can appreciate about yourself, about your life, about your situation, and about the people around you. Because there's always something to be appreciated. And while I'm at it, 
for those of you who have teams and those of you who are part of a team, even part of an organization, no better time than to appreciate your team and to show appreciation. And let's clear up kind of the recognition versus appreciation. Because these companies get into this whole recognition game, right? And we're given we're given swag away, and we're given extra vacation days, and we're, we're given all this stuff to almost kind of golden handcuff bribe people to be happy at work. Sometimes appreciation is just as simple as looking someone in the eye and saying thank you. Thank you for what you did. Thank you for how you showed up. Thank you for the impact that you made. Thank you. And because words matter, you will notice when I see things and when I post things, when you, people who get an invoice from me, um, anytime I'm saying thank you, I don't use thanks. I use thank you. There's something about that thanks that no. just bothers me. It seems informal. It seems not genuine. Mm -hmm. It seems like just a passing fancy. But thank you seems much more deliberate. Mm -hmm much more deliberate. I probably say thank you so much, too much, to the point where people are like, okay, Laurel, enough. But it's important for me when I am telling someone how much I appreciate what they've done and how much gratitude I'm sitting in for them having made the choice to do whatever the thing was, that I truly appreciate it and I am thanking them for the use of their time, energy, money, whatever resources to do the thing. And for me, thank you says that. You know, there's a, a movie, it's a B movie, and I watch it every time it comes on. Um, and it's kind of silly, but I love it because I love these two actors. And um, it's called Just Right. Have y'all watched that movie? With Common and Queen Latifah. Mm -hmm. Love that movie. Um, and it's so silly, but I just love it. But there's a point after the, he wins the playoffs um, and they're in the, the, like the green room, right? With all the reporters and everything. And he goes up to his mom and he hugs his mom. And he goes up to Queen Latifah's character and he hugs her, just hugs her really tight. And he says, thank you. And she says, yeah, no problem. He said, no. And looks her, I mean, focused look, right? And looks at her very intently and says, no, thank you. That's what I'm talking about. When it is very clear that you are looking someone eye to eye, that you are being very deliberate in your appreciation of whatever they have done for you. And when you sit in that appreciation and you realize what you have and what you've overcome and what you've been through, sometimes we don't look like what we've been through. In fact, my mom brought me up all the time to say, you know, when you feel bad and you feel your worst, you make an extra effort to look your best or you're going to look worse than you feel. Mm. Right. And there's there's a science to the external looking better, which kind of helps you get the internal together. Right. Not so much fake it till you make it all of this part of it, but it's really just it is action, taking action. That makes an impact on your attitude. And that's what gratitude and appreciation do. By taking action to be grateful, taking action to appreciate what's around you and the people that are working with you. You are moving into the impact of that action on your attitude. And gratitude can change your attitude in a minute, in a minute. So when you go through your day and through this month, and I am, and I will admit, and I will, I will apologize today because November 1st was Monday and I was so ready and getting, and didn't, didn't sleep on Sunday. And so Monday just, it just went off the rails, right? So I'm a day behind in my gratitude, but we're going to do a month of gratitude um, on all of my pages and all my platforms. But it's really important that we think through gratitude, not just to say, oh, I'm doing your gratitude practice. Oh, I'm saying thank you. Oh, it's just a month of thanks. It's not window dressing. I mean, you could do that, but it's not window dressing. And if you do it that way, you're not reaping the benefits, nor is anyone else of an attitude of gratitude. My brother and I, and I'm really excited about this. My brother and I got a chance to meet with the uh, president of Odessa College um, on Friday who is an amazing individual. And he is going to be on the radio show. I cannot wait for you guys to meet him. He has done such incredible things with Odessa College, a 
quote unquote community college that now also has baccalaureate degrees that got a grant from McKenzie Scott that is building a multi-million dollar facility and has expanded the campus. They have gone from 4,000 students to over 8,000 students. They are doing the thing, you hear me? And it's because of the focus that he has on serving the students, right? And appreciation for their stories and appreciation for the hard work that they're doing and, and an idea of gratitude and thanks for the hard work that they're doing to just be there and to just show up, right? And so in talking to him, as we were having this conversation, uh, good morning, Tisa. Um, as we were having this conversation and we were talking about all this stuff that we want to do and how we want to make an impact for some of these kids. So y'all stay tuned because it's going to be big and I'm so excited to be working with my brother as well. It is in, in talking to him and listening to him and just listening to his words, his humility and his focus and his actions that are grounded in forward movement all have this underpinning of gratitude. He happened to know my dad, right? My dad was his principal as well. Um, and, and that's a connection that we have, my brother and I have with him. And each time I've seen him, he says, I just want to say thank you. And I want to thank you. And I want to thank your dad. So I'm thanking your dad through you. I want to tell your mom, thank you. Every time I see her, he said, I, she just lights up and I just, I love her. Those kind of things, right? That gratitude that he has for the journey that he took and the people along the journey that helped him get there and supported him and promoted him, he has not forgotten that. And so as you are sitting in this social media world that we're all sitting in now, um, which is another place we connected because we're both under social, on social media under duress. It's just not something we love to do, but we do it, right? And as you're out there doing the social media thing, doing your own thing, doing your postings and your engagement and all that, but start watching everybody else's stuff. Be careful, be careful. One, we see all the Facebook papers and what stuff is actually doing to us mentally. So there's the, the behavioral stuff that's happening, but, but I say be careful because by watching other people's stuff and by starting the comparison train, mm -hmm. it eliminates or can hinder, doesn't necessarily completely eliminate, it can hinder your ability to evaluate your own stuff, your own action, your own choices, your own gifts. It can hinder your ability to evaluate all that stuff and really appreciate how far you've come, what you've done, the impact that you've made. And that appreciation is what can help you keep going, even on those days when all you can do is sit down and Netflix and chill and giving yourself the grace to be able to do that because you know, in looking back at all of the stuff you've done and everything you've been through and all the people who are supporting you, you can still garner that strength even in that mo even if in that moment, you just need a minute. You just need a minute. And rely on your village to help remind you of how far you've come, of all the things you've done. As I was sitting in, in my therapy session this week, um, and I was like, man, you know, typical Laurel, right? It's getting towards the end of the year. I'm like, this is all the stuff I want to do. I'm so behind. I got, you know, system, systematic, you know, frenetic, the world is ending kind of thing. And she said, she made me pause and she said, but look how far you've come. Look at all the stuff you've done. Well, but I just, she said, nope, stop. Just take a minute. Look at all the stuff you've done. And I literally had to breathe. I mean, I had to physically pause. I had to put my hands up, you know, stop and regroup. And I thought, you know what? And she said, so name, name for me some things that you've done, which forced my brain to stop, right? The frenetic movement and focus on the things that I've accomplished. That was a powerful moment for me because that's not where I go automatically. Where I go automatically is the stuff yet to be done because proper prior planning prevents poor performance right? So you should be continuing to plan for the other stuff that needs to be done, which is great, except for when it keeps you from appreciating the stuff you've already done and the impact you've already made. The fact that I've been able to still do this going into, going into year five out of corporate, but into year four of the business, right? Really year four of the business. 
I've been able to just do that. It has not been easy. It has not been simple. It has been costly. <laughs> There's some stuff that I can't wait to start being able to make up, right? But I've been able to do it. And so changing my attitude, changing my perspective around what achievement looks like because I'm sitting in gratitude for what I have and where I've been and what I've learned, and what I've overcome, completely changes that perspective. And it's no longer, well, I'm working on it no longer being about beating myself up, <laughs> right? Because I can't, you know, we tell the truth on this show. Because I would be lying if I said, yeah, I don't do that anymore. That is simply not true. I still have those moments where I start with, <laughs> my list is so long and what am I gonna do? And I still start with that sometimes. But I'm so aware of it now that I can catch it, I can stop it, I can redirect that energy to forward movement. And in this month, I am being very, very focused and deliberate about refocusing that energy immediately into gratitude and appreciation. First, to stop the swirl, focus on the good and the, the wonderful things that I've been given and the, the, the God-given downloads and gifts and starting there and then moving into the other stuff, right? The other stuff that I'm thankful for, the other stuff that I'm appreciative of. But starting with that gratitude and then getting back refocused on where I want to do what I want to do next. Because here's the thing, you know, we talked a little bit about it last week. There's all of this, this design work that happens as you grow up, right? And it's the same thing we were talking about with Dr. Williams is grow up, go to college, get a degree, get a job. You know, my brother, who is brilliant, he's the brilliant one, said, you know, our dad always told us that every job is professional. Every job is professional. We need to stop categorizing people by blue collar and white collar and assume that if you're doing something that works with your hands or is a trade, that that's not professional. If you're going to work, you're showing up, you're executing, you're being there, that's a professional. And like, you know what, you're right. You're right, because words matter. And when we start using those words to separate people, to lift ourselves up by putting others down, that's a problem. That's a problem. And sitting in that, that design that we've been taught of what is success, what society deems as successful. And then if you go into organizations, right? whether it's corporations, nonprofits, education, whatever it is, that kind of up, up or out mentality. If you're not moving up, then you're not being successful. But you know what? Not everybody wants to be managing people. And why is that a problem? Why is that unsuccessful if I just don't want to be managing folks? It's just not where my spirit lies. It's not where my gut is. It's not where my genius is. I don't want to be bothered. So why are you forcing me to do that? And I'm going to be bad at it. Or even if I'm good at it, it's taking so much of my energy that everything else falls aside. Stop it. Stop it. When we focus on so much on the strategy, and I'm a big believer in strategy, because if you don't know where you're going, how do you know who needs to be on your team, right? I'm a big believer in strategy and planning and making sure you know where you're going and who you need. That's really important. But everything in moderation, right? So all of those things that we've learned in these organizations that we've worked in, actually become maladaptive. That was a word my, uh, my therapist used yesterday. Maladaptive to entrepreneurship or just life, right? Those things that we've learned very young and very early for survival or for success become maladaptive or not working as you continue to grow and move and mature. They don't work anymore or they don't work the same way. So strategy and focus and understanding where you're going is really important. And now as I'm doing this other thing, the how that's really important in organizations. So you got to do this thing, but how are you doing it? How are you talking to people? How are you showing up? How, that is critical because you're dealing with masses, right? You're dealing with people all the time in close proximity. When you're building something, especially when you're building your own business, the how is secondary. Because the how begins to eliminate can, we not speak in, in absolutes, the how, getting so focused on the how, can begin to eliminate your ability to just do, to just move. How am I going to do this? How do I know I'm doing the right thing? How do I get in touch with somebody? How do I find the right money? How do I, how, 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 how? And the next thing you know, it's two years later and you've done nothing. 
because the how has completely paralyzed you. So we take that training that we've learned to survive in organizations and it becomes a problem when we are trying to do something different. And while we learn to adapt, because that's what we do, right? Beings adapt. It's often difficult to recognize that that's what the challenge is. That's what the click is, right? That's the the change we need to make. I was about to use pivot. Y'all know how I feel about the word pivot. That's the quick change we need to make. The adjustment to how we're thinking about how versus what. To flip the script, so to speak, so that the what becomes the real focus and the how is just it'll happen. We'll figure it out. It'll come to you. Because guess what? If you're sitting in appreciation and you're thinking about all of the things that have happened and all the experiences that you've had in every place that you've been, most likely there have been some hows that you've learned through there that you didn't plan. You just figured it out. You just made it work. When I went to Spain and finished my degree over there, I just figured it out. I had three or four classes in Spanish. I needed to get that degree. I was paying for it myself. I was not leaving that country without that degree. So you figure it out. I didn't know how I was going to do it. I just knew I was in Spanish class and I was another class. I had to figure it out. We have an ability to just figure stuff out. We really do. We just get in our own way. And if we can pause and sit in appreciation for everything that we've done and everything that we've been through and every other way we have shown up for stuff, it gives us space to say, okay, let me just pause. Let me not panic. Let me reevaluate and then take action because imperfect action is better than perfect inaction because at least imperfect action is movement Mm -hmm. forward is forward even if it's baby steps forward Mm -hmm. is forward and sometimes that forward is a little bit sideways sometimes forward is a step back to get out of the mess so that you can move forward even quicker but movement is forward moving, right? Any kind of movement kind of gets you going. It gets the energy moving and it enables you to then get some feedback that you can adjust to and move forward again with additional information. But if you just sit stagnant, you're just waiting for somebody to tell you, you're just waiting for it to come up, then what? Two years, three years, four years down the road, you're still sitting in that same space. Wonder what happened. I got really irritated with myself as I was talking to her saying, you know, part of the problem is there's so much stuff I love. There's so much stuff I love. There's so much stuff I want to do. And there's no time and or I don't make the time, you know, because I recognize work. I'm like, no, I'm just not making the time. And there's the languages and there's the golf and there's the the other stuff I want to do. And there's the travel and there's there's all these things I want to do. But then I got to run this business. And I got. Wah, 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 wah. It it, it just like the 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 um, Charlie Brown character, wah, 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 wah. I was tired of hearing me. And I said, and she said to me, she said, you know, we've talked about the fact that a lot of times the challenge for people who have a lot of interests, who are lifelong learners, who love to learn, who get their energy from learning new stuff, and being involved in new things, is that staying focused to completion on other stuff can be very difficult because it feels like you'll never have time to do the stuff you love. And then the stuff you're doing that's in your zone of excellence, so you don't love it anyway. It's in your zone of excellence, so you're really, really good at it. You just don't love it. Becomes even more burdensome because you're recognizing that because I have to do this, I can't do this. Because there are some things you can't multitask. I've got so many books I want to read, right? And I'm determined to get going on them. i got four open right now. But some things you can't multitask. I can't read the book while I'm also working on my tech, right? Those are mutually exclusive for me. I can't even do the audio book while I'm listening to tech. I can listen to radio. I can listen to music. Um, I can listen to just kind of noise. Every once in a while, I can listen to a podcast while I'm doing some other stuff. But where my brain needs to engage, and I'm really trying to hear and understand some things, I can't do anything else. But I can listen to an audio book while I'm doing laundry or while I'm purging or while I'm cleaning or while I'm filing. Right. So I can multitask in places where there is an ability to still learn and grow and, and, and develop and feed that piece of my soul. But in the meantime, instead of being so irritated at me for all the stuff that I want to do that I'm not doing, it is setting myself in a state of appreciation and gratitude 
for the fact that I do love a lot of stuff. And I've taken the opportunity to go see a bunch of stuff. And I am building a space where I can travel again, like I want to travel and see some things and learn some things and go some places I've never been before because I've got a long list of places I want to go before I die. So instead of sitting in, Laurel, really? 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 I'm sitting in, nope, you know what? Because I've done all this other stuff, I'm prepping myself to do the other thing. Again, I'm not claiming that it's easy. It's not easy. But it's necessary. And it is imperative that you have this foundation that grounds you. I found it. And if you don't want to call it appreciation or gratitude, call it something else, right? But that foundation that grounds you in who you are, what you've done, and a, a, a real recognition for what you have overcome and the skills and gifts that you have that are uniquely yours. You may be doing some of the same business that other people do, but the way you do it, the way you execute is unique to you. And sitting in that understanding gives you an opportunity to think about possibilities because you are recognizing your own talents and your own gifts. And that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. It puts us in a whole different mindset than when we're just sitting there thinking about all the stuff that hasn't happened or all the things we haven't done or why didn't I? And there's not enough time and I just want to go to bed, right? And that does happen too. And there's sometimes when you just need to honor that and just go to bed. Just go get that pint of ice cream, put on your fuzzy slippers, grab a spoon and call it a day. And I've had those moments. I have had those moments where I'm like, you know what? I need to take a nap. Who knew we would love naps when we got older? Used to hate to take a nap when we were little. Now, you give me an opportunity to take a nap, I'm all in. Except mm -hmm. my naps tend to be hours instead of just 15, 20 minutes. Whoever thought of that power nap, I'm mad at you because mm -hmm. I don't do power nap. That just makes me angry. If I'm going to sleep, I need to sleep because I don't do it well. <laughs> so when I get a chance to really sleep, I want to sleep. So we need to take that time. Right. And even appreciate those times when we just are at the end of our rope. We are at the end of our energy. We're at the end of our resources. We have expended all that we have and sit in appreciation for that and appreciation and trust enough of ourselves that we are willing to then give ourselves a minute. Because by doing that, you can then come back better and stronger and faster and more focused, being more likely to be kind of in that ventral area, right, in the joy zone where you can think clearly, you can evaluate the story better. You can really understand, yes, I know my experiences, but is the story I'm telling myself the real story? Or is the story just something I'm making up? And then I can act accordingly or move accordingly. But if we never start with a foundation, a foundation of appreciating everything we've done, everywhere we've been, all the stuff that we've, we've gone through, everything we've learned, right? The good and the bad, then it's very difficult to move forward in a way that gets us to the goal that gets us to the what and having that dinner with my god sister last night was just just another indication of that right those those small moments those small moments those conversations that have little nuggets in them that you never thought you needed right that whole simplicity thing because i'm all about keeping it simple except apparently in my own life Right? Physician heal thyself. That's why therapists have therapists, why lawyers have lawyers, why doctors have doctors, why coaches have coaches, because you can't heal yourself all the time, right? You need a little bit of help. You need someone with expertise to put the mirror up in front of you to say, mm, let's rethink that. Let's redo that. Did you hear what you just said? Is that what you meant? Here's what I'm hearing that can really pair it back to you what you're saying to yourself about yourself and about your circumstances so that you can hear it, process it, and then decide what you want to do with it. Even if that decision is, I can't do anything with that right now. Cause there are some times when I'll go into something and I'll say, mm, you know, I'm just, I can't right now that I'm just going to pass. And as they say, you don't have to show up to every fight that you're invited to. You don't have to be in everybody else's drama. You don't have to be in everybody else's stuff. 
And you most certainly do not have to own everybody else's stuff because that's their stuff. You got your own. I know me. I got plenty of stuff that belongs to me that was created by me to be holding everybody else's. I've got plenty more than. And by sitting in appreciation of the things that I've been able to do, I can deal with my stuff so that I can do no harm, right? Because that's a big thing. That's a big thing that always sits in my soul when I'm working with clients, especially one-on-one, is to do no harm. And I know that's more of a physician kind of thing, right? But when you're a coach or an advisor or a, a life coach or whatever kind of personal intervention person you are, do no harm. It's one of the things that worries me about people who just automatically say, hey, here's what I do and here's how I help without without any receipts. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm not butting up against the, you don't have to have the PhD before you can do the thing. That's not what I mean. But when you are really acting in a position of trust where you're creating safe spaces, where people are relying upon you to be able to help them through something and to deliver a solution in whatever thing it is, you should be in a position to do no harm. And if you are not in a position to do no harm, you should be strong enough, trustworthy enough, confident enough, and competent enough to say, you know what, now I'm seeing this, now I understand the situation better. I am not the best person, but I bet I know somebody. And I'm very quick to tell people that. Let me understand what you need. We'll see if it's a fit on your side as well as mine. If I don't feel like I'm the right fit for you, then I probably know somebody or I know someone who knows someone. And I am more than happy to refer because at the end of the day, it's not about me. It's about serving you. So all of you out there who are in a service oriented kind of business, first do no harm. And that translates as well into first do no harm to yourself. First do no harm to yourself. We have a tendency to forget that we need to be on the list. Put your mask on first. You can't serve from an empty vessel, right? Help you in order to help them. Make sure your cup is full. Serve from your overflow. You know, all the cliches. But they're grounded in the reality that resources are limited, time, energy, money, right? They're limited. And so be very deliberate in how you are using them and use them for greater service and greater impact and to ensure that you are doing no harm. I've talked to quite a few people over the last two months who have been working with people and have had really, really bad experiences. And I'm very, very careful, very careful to be clear that I am not a therapist. I am not a counsel licensed counselor. I, I am none of those things and I'm not purporting myself to be because um, there is a certain level of training and real training, right? And development and certification, all that that goes along with those disciplines that is critical to being able to do those and not do harm. And the trauma that they're feeling, right, is real. And what I realized for a couple of them that I referred to someone else is that their trauma triggered my trauma. Their experience triggered really bad responses to my experience. So dramatic, in fact, that I thought, you know, I am concerned about my ability to truly serve without inserting way too much of my own bias and way too much of my own responsiveness to this situation because I lived it. I lived it. And so in those cases, I referred somebody to someone else, which is so important to me. It's so important to me um, and anyone who works with me. What you see is what you get. This is it. You're always going to get the truth. You're going to get real me. And you're gonna get those situations where I say, you know what, I just don't think that I'm gonna be the right person, but here's some people that I think you should really talk to because one of them might be fantastic for you. And I have so much comfort and so much peace around that because I've learned that it's not one, all money and good money. Cause there are a lot of people who will just take it cause of the money, all money isn't good money. But two, even when you have nothing, if you have a good name, you have everything. 
And if what I'm doing, the work I'm doing triggers my own responses that are then detrimental to the person I'm supposed to be serving, then that creates a whole different problem. And I'm ultimately going to be destroying my brand and my business anyway. So what's the point? Why do that? But when I can sit in appreciation for what I do know and what I do have and appreciation for working through my own trauma, especially corporate trauma, and an appreciation for how I got through that and how I've moved through it. And that there are still some things that are not completely healed from that madness. When I sit in gratitude for that and, and the experiences it gave me that have enabled me to do the work I do now, but also appreciation for the work that I have to do to get through it and over it. Cause a lot of times the only way to get over something is to go through it. Right. That enables me to sit in complete confidence and say, I'm not the right person. I am really good at what I do. I'm exceptional at what I do, but I am not the right person in this moment for what you need. But I know someone who is. And I've gotten more thanks and appreciation from people that I've done that to or done that for because their mindset was, uh oh, well, it's not, you know, then I can't find anybody. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm not saying no and then gonna leave you hanging because service is all about service. And so it's in your best interest and in my best interest to help you continue to find someone because the idea is for you to get served, not for me to serve you directly, but for you to get served. And it's the same thing for ourselves. The idea is that we should be able to get served for ourselves in order to serve others. We should be able to refill our cups. We should be able to put our masks on first. We should be able to take a minute and do the things we need to do. You know, I'm really, my gut, my spirit are just telling me, go on another solo trip before the end of the year. Take a minute. Take a minute to just regroup and settle and decide and really sit deep in getting clarity on focus on what, on the what. Really crystal clear on the what to sleep to rest, to rejuvenate, to do those things that, yes, you did over your birthday trips, but that you really need some more focused time because there was so much, your brain was so messy. And my spirit's just telling me to do that. And I sit in gratitude for that kind of God wink and said, hey, 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 Laurel, hey, <laughs> you got to do something. And so I encourage you as you're going through this month of gratitude to one, sit in appreciation and gratitude for everything that you have been through because of what it enabled you to do, the lessons it gave you, what you were able to overcome, what you were able to learn, the new skills you built, the new scars you healed. Because those scars give you the confidence and the tools to get through the next battle, right? They just show your battle tested. That's all they do. They don't cause problems. They show your battle tested. They show you're ready for the next one. And then you're going to always get scars. You're going to get different scars. But you're not going to get that same scar you got before because you move through that. And by being able to sit in appreciation for it, it enables you to really think clearly and deeply about how you can move forward with strength, right? And with confidence because you know where you've been. As I said, you don't always look like what you've been through. Most of us don't look like what we've been through. And we don't know everyone's story, which is another reason why we have to be kind and show appreciation for people. If you've got a team showing appreciation for your team, telling them thank you for what they did, because you don't always know, even as a boss, as a supervisor, as a colleague, you don't necessarily always know everything that everybody's going through because they're not necessarily telling you everything. I know I didn't. And many people I know don't. There's only a certain amount of stuff that you tell people because some things, one, are just not everybody's business, but two, are just not appropriate for whatever the situation is. So sit in an opportunity to be grateful and thankful and forward moving in strength from a solid foundation because you have done amazing things. If you are listening to this, you have done amazing things. You are still here. The fact that you are still here means that you have overcome some stuff. And remember what Holly said, you don't have to be perfect to be priceless. The fact that you exist makes you priceless. 
You are here for a reason. You are here for a purpose. You have something to deliver. There are people who are looking for you and you owe it to yourself to take care of you, to put you on the list. In fact, to put you at the top of the list. Because when you are good, then you're able to be good for other folks. And that is a, it's a difficult lesson to learn. It's more, even more difficult to do, especially for women, right? Because we've been taught to serve everybody else, put everybody else first. For those of you with kids, you know, the kids come first, kids come first, kids come first. And in a lot of ways, that's true, especially the younger they are. But guess what? You can't serve your kids if you're sick, if you're tired, if you're unable to have the energy, right? So you still got to do some stuff for you so you can show up for them. It is not selfish to have a little self-care. And sometimes you got to be selfish with your time in order to be selfless with others. It just is, y'all. It just is. They all agree. <laughs> Thank y'all for listening. Um, they said this is touching their hearts. They needed to hear this. The day Kay Moore said she needed to hear this thing today that said speak queen thank you so much i'm i'm telling y'all this just you know jerry and i were talking about this the other day because you know i i take notes right i take notes but there have been a couple of weeks where i'm like what am i gonna talk about and i'm thinking about it as as soon, as soon as i walk in here but i'm telling you that dinner with my god sister the meeting with dr williams last week this whole idea of simplicity my therapy session with my therapist this week the whole idea of gratitude november 1st could not have come at a better time as quick as this year is going and as crazy as it is that I cannot believe we are in November, I'm just, I'm not ready, right? <laughs> I cannot believe we're in November. But it's the perfect timing. And that's the other thing, y'all. Things happen when they're supposed to happen. We hear the messages we need to hear when we're ready to hear them. I've been thinking about this language thing for years, years, and just putting it off and how I'm going to do it. And when I'm gonna... Madness. One dinner, five minutes, downloaded the app. Here we go. 10, 15 minutes a day, right? Simple. But you also have to give yourself the opportunity to just pause and listen and not automatically have a response. Remember, we're listening to understand, not listening to respond, including to ourselves. Why am I saying that? What did I really mean? Did I really mean to say that to myself? Is that really what I'm thinking? Listen to understand, not to respond. Because once you understand, then you can formulate an appropriate response. But that appreciation and gratitude for what you've done and where you've been and how you've overcome is huge. It's huge. We do not do enough of that. And I'm not talking about being grandiose and bragging and, and all that. I'm just talking about the simple, you know what? I made it. I made it. Hey, Ray. Thank you. It is. Um, it's just, I just can't express enough to you guys. And I ask all of you, I invite all of you, let me not ask, I invite all of you to engage, even if you've never done it before, even if you do it on a regular basis, to deliberately and with action and decision and a full heart, take the month of November and do a some kind of gratitude practice, some kind of appreciation practice for 30 days, right? Now it's 29 days. Just every three minutes. Five minutes, even if you pause once a day and say, thank you, universe, God, whatever your thing is, right? And really sit in appreciation for all you have, every everywhere you've been, everything that you've done. Sit in that appreciation. 30 days, 30 days. I am telling you, your perspective is going to change. You are going to appreciate more who you are and where you are and what you've done. You are going to be able to sit in a place that says, you know what? I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I was. And I'm even more convicted about getting to where I want to be. And I'm going to take active steps with some kindness and compassion towards myself in those moments of weakness. I'm going to take active steps to get there, whatever those are. And I'll worry about the how, and I'll be open and listening for the divine downloads. I'll be listening for the messages that I'm supposed to hear when I'm ready to hear them in places that are unexpected. In places that are unexpected. That dinner you you 
were reluctant to go to or you were too tired and you just wanted to make sure you showed up for the person. That event you didn't want to go to because you didn't you had too much people that day, right? That party, that thing, that book you didn't want to read, that devotional you didn't want to have, that link you didn't want to click on. All those I don't want us, as you're doing that this week, pause and listen and see what your gut is telling you. Because there may be a blessing somewhere in that I don't want to that you're missing because you're sitting in the I don't want to as opposed to sitting in the possibility and the gratitude because the possibility will move you forward. The gratitude will ground you so that you can even see the possibilities. There's just so much available out there. There's so much that is waiting for you. And there's so many people who are waiting for you to show up. They're waiting for you to be there. They're waiting for you and only you. Some of them just don't even know it yet. And neither do you because you're not showing up yet. So I want you to take this this month. I invite you to take this month and do it with me every day, every day, two minutes, one minute, 30 seconds, whatever, every day. Name something that you appreciate about you and about others. Find somebody and tell them, tell them how much you appreciate them. Go out, put your feet in the grass, although it's getting cold now. Whatever you need to do to ground yourself and sit in that space that says, you know what? I'm all right. I'm, I'm better than all right. I'm pretty dang good. I'm pretty dang good. I'm not perfect, but I'm pretty dang good. And those imperfections that I can work on, I will. And the ones that I can't, well, you know what? I'm just going to own them. Like my lack of a poker face. I'm not fixing that. That's work that I don't feel like I want to do. And I got other things that are more important. But I do work on my words and my understanding and my listening so that my words do not re reflect the look that's on my face. So if my face says, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard, my words will say, okay, now help me understand how you got there because I must be missing something. And I mean it when I say it. That's, that's the key. Right. It's not passive aggressive. I really mean it when I say it because there might be something that I missed. And so I learned something in that moment. But I can appreciate the fact that Everyone has a perspective that is the basis upon which they are saying or doing whatever it is they're saying or doing. And if I can at least understand it, even if I don't agree, then I can increase my argument because I know where they're coming from. Right? I can morph my position because I know theirs. If I'm sitting in gratitude, if I'm listening actively, if I'm paying attention and I'm listening to understand, not to respond. And if I'm thinking about being in service, if I'm thinking about saying thank you, not thanks, thank you. And I'm looking someone in the eye, letting them know that I mean it, that I'm deliberate about it, and that I see you. And with that, I want to tell all of you, thank you. Tomorrow, I'm going to get emotional. Tomorrow is the 100th episode of the Relish Perspective podcast. Woo. Now, that's a baby podcast. There are people with millions and millions and millions of downloads and all that. But let me tell you something. My little baby podcast is a work of love. And I am so honored and so grateful and so thankful that you guys choose to listen and download and watch the videos that are of the podcast. Cause I do video and audio that you watch the videos that you share it, that you comment. I am so appreciative and so eternally grateful that you decide to spend your resources and your time with me both on this radio show and on the podcast. So you'll see my little 100th episode posting this afternoon. Um, and then, say it again. It's not little. Oh. It's not little, thank you. It's not little, yeah. My baby podcast. My big baby podcast. <laughs> big baby, my big baby podcast. But I am, I just want to tell you guys, as we sit in appreciation, I am so appreciative of this opportunity. I'm appreciative of Jerry and the opportunity to be on this radio show. And the KCOH TV radio, The Boost in Historic Third Ward. I am just sitting in gratitude. I am deliberately going to be in gratitude this month. And I thank you all for your time, for your support, for your comments, for listening around the world, right? And here in Houston, thank you, Sarah. I am so appreciative. Thank you for tuning in. Comments, questions, please send those. Go follow Kyra. I'm going to post it on my Facebook page. I'll send it to Jerry too. Go follow Kyra. Go download her book. Um, thank you again for being a sponsor of the Kyra Company, Kyra Rennell and the Kyra Company.
We'll catch you guys next week. Have a good one. Bye.